the left tap is hot water. I think it's about 115, 120 degrees. So we'll start with that. All right, we're at the fill level. Now we're gonna set it to 150 for chicken and plug it in. And uh, one thing you do not want to do is to plug this in when there's no water in the tank. Um, 2000 watts in a small area like that heating element will do weird and nasty stuff. And I'm pretty sure it might melt stuff. So don't ever plug this in when there's water absent from the tank. Just gonna double check. So we're starting at, oh wow, that's impressive. My tap water comes out at 140, I was wrong. Well, that's not gonna take long at all. All right, now to set up a workstation. and a cutting board. Sawhorses are set up and leveled. There's a work table with a melamine cutting board. Everything is clamped so it doesn't slide off. Knives are sharp. Over at the plucker, that's kind of the nervous system. There is a manifold. So the water hooks up. Automatically goes to the rinse ring. There is a valve right here with a slow trickle over to the cooler. We have well water, so that's cool water that's gonna chill them as soon as we pluck them and eviscerate. And then there's one more hose for rinsing or whatever we might need that for. Over at the scalder, we're set to 150 degrees. I think it swings up and down maybe two degrees because of the thermostat. 10 gallons of hot water is ready to go. The lid is just on right now because we're waiting. I don't want to waste the heat. In front of the plucker, um, hopefully this makes cleaning up the feathers easier. I put out plastic. And uh, yeah, that's the setup. And over here are the killing cones. I'm going to put some buckets underneath here. I can get it apart. blood all right and ready to butcher So I just moved the killing cones. They were over here and the clamps were down low right in there. So the clamps are getting blood on them. They're my woodworking clamps. I want to be clean. So I rinsed them off, reset up over here. And now I can clamp up high to the trailer. 
So that seems to be a better spot. Now the clamps are gonna not get all bloody and messy and sticky and rusty. Right, bud? So three days ago, we did the butchering, the processing, and then put them in the fridge to rest. Uh, when they rest in the fridge, they're basically wrapped loosely in freezer paper. That allows them to dry out a little bit and drain. And it also allows the rigor mortis to loosen or let go, meaning that the muscles become flexible or pliable now. So now that that's happened, today we are putting them in the shrink bags. All right, so we just got to take the temperature setting. And this is the normal max, but since I shaved away this plastic here, so there's just a tiny little triangle right there, I can turn it up higher. Cool trick, right? There we go, about eight and a half, nine gallons of 140 degree water from the tap. And uh, now to go hotter. We'll plug it in. Again, never plug in a water heating element without water in the tank. Bad stuff will happen. Don't ask me how I know. How about I take the video from behind and then it's like a, like a mystery, like, what are you doing? I don't know, it's something important. Yep, okay, yeah, need that tool. Uh-huh. Okay. So over here, we're just giving them the once over, pulling up any pin feathers, making sure they're nice and clean before we put it in the bag. The water here, this is the same scalder we used the other day and it's turned up hotter now. Now it's between 180 and 190 degrees and that's what we need to shrink the bags. Who makes the bags? Texas Poultry Shrink Bags. Texas Poultry Shrink Bags. So those are the bags. If you're wondering, this is just leftover pieces. Um, turns out old canister lights used to be incandescent, so they had these little inserts. Now they're LED light panels. And then this is a guard for a, like a heat lamp for the coop. Uh, so it's a spare halogen guard. And uh, we make this little dunker doohickey. And that keeps the bird from floating around in there. So it just goes straight down and the bag gets good contact with the hot water. Otherwise, it was a kind of trying to stick a balloon underwater and it just really didn't work too well. I have another video featuring the full build of the plucker. Uh, this, however, is just a quick look at the scalder. The scalder is relatively simple. It's just a 15-gallon barrel. I cleaned it up because it was outside for a few years. Welded on a galvanized nut that fits a water heater element. You can also find an adapter, so you just have to drill a hole and then screw the adapter on. So there is a no welding installation method available. Then the heating element is inserted into the barrel and wired up. The thermostat is just a standard $15, $18 thermostat. And you can see that I modified it 
to go from 150 to a bit further, all the way up to 180 to 190 degrees. The thermostat has an aluminum plate on the back with four holes drilled in it. I used two of those holes and aluminum pop rivets to attach it to the barrel. This system worked very well and does not leak. And that is just a quick look at the thermostat. It's wired up for 110 volt. Just make sure if you have a 2000 watt heating element like me, you use a heavy 12 gauge or better extension cord. That's all guys. Thanks.